Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Congratulations, you have survived dealing with one-dimensional kinematics. You have dealt with situations with objects moving horizontally, with objects moving vertically, and with two objects chasing after each other. That last one, of course, very annoying. Now, well, we've done everything we can with one dimension. So now it is time to slide into the second dimension. To be honest, you've already done this. I did that on purpose. You guys have done two-dimensional vector addition. So you already kind of know all the answers of what's going to happen, what we're going to see. You know how to do it. You've done it before. The only thing is that now we're going to talk more about what it looks like. You'll see what I mean by that as we go. But first, let's do a bit of a reminder. Two-dimensional vector addition, right? One-dimensional vector addition is really easy, right? If I've got two vectors, blue and red here, and I've got one vector that's going like this, and I've got another vector that's like this, what's going to happen? This, subtract this, so I'll end up somewhere around here or so, right? That I hope that is, that's pretty, pretty unremarkable at this point. Two-dimensional vector addition, we might have something like one of those, and then we're going to have another guy who's going up like this. And then the question we end up asking is, uh, what's, uh, what's this vector and what's this angle, right, from start to finish? How do we do that? Pythagoras. The Pythagoras equation. So if I make up some numbers here, uh, let's do 10 and, uh, you know what, let's just do 10 for both, right? It makes it easy. If I do that, then my equation is going to be c squared equals a squared plus b squared. So c is going to equal square root of 10 squared plus 10 squared. 10 squared is 100, so this is 200. So the root of 200 is going to be 14.14. He says as though doing it in his head, but he actually did it earlier. 14.14. So we're done, right? Uh, mm, no, no, we still need the angle. Ah, cursed angle. How do we get the angle again? Uh, trig. So for trigonometry in this case, we're going to use tan. Tan theta equals 10 over 10. That's obviously going to be 1. In this case, the angle is going to be 45 degrees. Which way? Oh, this was the hardest part. This was the hardest part of vector addition. Which way? We spent a whole bunch of time talking about that, about how the weird quirks of English and the way these angles all behave. We are north of the east line. North of east. So that means that the final answer for this two-dimensional vector is 14 Point one four comma forty five degrees north of east. We're done. But I purposefully did something. I didn't put units in here. Yeah. Why? Because it doesn't actually matter. When I'm doing vector addition, the method is the same. When we did this the first time, these units were meters, 10 meters and 10 meters, and this was 14.14 meters. But it doesn't have to be. Any vector is added this way if it's two-dimensional. So I can choose what the vector is. And I'm going to choose something a little different. I'm going to choose meters per second. Velocity vectors. I mean, this makes sense. Velocity vectors can totally point in different directions. We know that. We've done a whole unit so far on one-dimensional kinematics where the vectors are either pointing forward or backward or up or down. But now they're going to point some east and some north. Hmm. Does that really do anything to this? Does the math change? No. No, it doesn't. This is still going to be meters Per second, because that's what I started with, but the procedure remains exactly the same. And this is going to be a key thing about what we're going to do here. No matter how weird everything gets, no matter how kooky everything appears, just remember that the math is the same. Let's take a closer look. 
especially at the kind of questions that we're going to see on page 11, because while we did do an awful lot of um, basic vector addition, not everyone did the advanced questions. And I told you at the time that we would eventually learn how to do them. Well, that eventually is now. So what are the advanced questions again? The basic questions are vectors that are directly on the axis, right? We've got a horizontal line, we've got a vertical line of some form, and you just add them using Pythagoras. The advanced questions take things a little further. Because in the advanced questions, if we put our line like so, we'll end up with, say, two vectors. I'm going to do them in blue and red. And uh, if we, well, let's take one of the examples from our book. Makes it easy. The very first example is a 12 meter vector that is 25 degrees north of west. Oh, north of west is this way. So this is 12 meters at 25 degrees north of west. There's another vector that is 21 meters, 65 degrees south of west. So it's going to be even more south. This is going to be 65 degrees, and this is 21 meters. Well, how in the world am I going to do this? Right? Normally, the way I would do this is I would uh, go something like this. I would take my starting vector, I would draw it out a particular direction, I would take my second vector, I would connect it in a particular way, I would then go like so, and then I would figure out this and this based on Pythagoras. But that all relies on the fact that this is a right angle triangle and this one isn't. So what am I going to do? I can't do this. I mean, maybe I could for this exact question, but only if I got lucky and that happened to work out. But what am I going to do? Well, when confronted with a new problem, turn into an old problem you already know how to do. Ignore this second vector, right? I'm going to stand in front of it. There we go. Just look at this one. What is that? It's just hypotenuse. It's hypotenuse with an angle. Couldn't I um, break that hypotenuse into its legs, like so? What does that get me? What does that mean? Well, I could find these two pieces. And those are on right angles, aren't they? What about the red one? Could I not break it into its two pieces? Find those? I could, but what would that get me? We've mentioned before how sometimes we make the question harder first and then it becomes easier. Well, what does that get me? Let me pull all those number, all those lines out. I've got one line that goes like this. And I've got a second line that goes like this. I've got one line that goes up. And I've got a second line that goes down. That's one dimensional vector addition. I know how to do that. You know how to do that. These two dimensional vectors, these two here that go out in big, right? this one goes up like this, this one goes down like this. They're made of two vectors each, one going horizontally and one going vertically. I can add the two vertical vectors. I can add the two horizontal vectors. And if I do that, what do I get? Hmm. Let's take a look. Let us take a look. This is 25 degrees, 12 meters. So if I want to get a hold of, say, this vector here, so we're going to call that one x because it's along the x-axis. Well, the x vector is adjacent to the 25 degrees. So that's cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. So cos theta would be cos 25 equals adjacent, which is what I'm looking for. I'm going to make that x, and then divided by the hypotenuse, which is 12. 
So I'm going to move the 12 over here, like so, and just a little bit of algebra. And that will give me my x. So I take out my trusty calculator. I'm going to do some cosine of 25 times 12. And that tells me that the answer is 10.88 meters. What about y? Well, y is over here, right? It's uh, opposite. So y is going to be sine theta equals opposite over hypotenuse. That's going to be sine 25 equals, we'll say that's y, hypotenuse. We're going to pull that over. That's going to be the 12 again. So I'm going to do sine of 25 times 12. And that's going to give me 5.07. OK, that's not, I mean, it's good, but we need a little more. Once we get the last piece, then we can put this together. So that's the first vector. Right, that's vector 1. Now let's take a look at vector 2. Vector 2 is going to be, again, x. And again, we're going to get, in this case, 21 cos 65 degrees equals x. Because again, this is our x right here. And if we want to do sine, we're going to get 21 sine. 65 degrees will equal our y. All right, so let's put it together here. So cosine is going to give me a nice solid 8.87. And sine is going to give me A 19.03. I can now redraw this diagram. And I can make all of this, hopefully, a lot clearer. Because it's no longer a case that I have these two weird vectors that are sitting off at an angle. What do I have? I have one vector pointing this way at 10.88. I have a second vector pointing this way at 8.87. I have one vector pointing up at 5.07, and another vector pointing down at 19.03. I can now add these using one-dimensional vector addition. New problem into an old problem. When I do that, I'm going to get 10 plus 8. So we're looking at about 19 point something. Let's take a look exactly what we get. 10.88 plus 8.87. Helps if you put a decimal in there. 19.75. So this can be redone, can be combined together with one dimensional vector addition, and we'll get something that looks like, well, let's just use this. Nineteen point seven five going left. And then I compare these two, and one is up and one is down, so obviously they subtract. And we get 13.96. 
That question now looks like a question we know how to do. It's just Pythagoras now, right? We just need to find this and this. All right, let's do this. We're going to take our 19.75, we're going to square it. We've got ourselves at 13.96. We're squaring it, right? Because this is A and this is B and this is C. C squared. They're not right nice round numbers, of course, but yeah, we can't have everything. We're going to get ourselves that squared plus 19.75. Squared. Uh, you may notice that I didn't put any negatives in here. Yes, both of them are negative, but they're squared, so they're both going to become positive anyway. So I do that, and I'm going to get that C here is going to be 24.18 meters. Then I do the uh, tangent. Tan theta equals 13.96 divided by 19.75. Thirteen point nine six divided by nineteen point seven five equals. We're going to get theta equals to thirty five point two five degrees south of west. And there we go. We're done. That was the first question on page eleven. It's just a reminder of how advanced uh, problems work. The answer key for this one actually shows you step by step what all of the different pieces are. So even if you didn't quite catch my video, you can see it there. At the end of the day, what we did was we took the two resultant vectors that we started with, right? Instead of these being question marks, they gave us these numbers. This one was 21. This one was 12. And then we took these numbers and broke them into the two pieces, the x and the y. And by doing that, we were able to turn this new problem into an old problem that we already know how to do. And that's it. Now we just solve it like we've solved every other question. So I'm going to turn you guys loose. Take some time, practice some of that vector addition, although you're going to get lots of practice with vector addition over the next little while. Don't you worry about that. And I will see you guys next time.